Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Rory back again. Just hang on tight for a second and get some peace on. And we'll start. No problem. Going on, Justin. Get some peace going. We'll walk you through this, all right? These little combinations can have uh, some coil understanding with induction and how the induction reacts to the magnetism of the magnet to create induction in the core. And Tonight I have a convenient circuit set up on this side, one on this side, two run batteries, one charging battery, that's the bolt of the charging battery. So this battery um, is dead, it won't even take a charge, so it's 5.30. And then on this battery, we got the circuitry here. Uh, we're using these two run batteries, and uh, that's the battery there, and it's right here, and it's at 5.70. So it's a dead battery as well, it won't charge. So out of the batteries I have, I have a good collection over here. Um, some are useless, well, were until I got the setup going. And uh, cool stuff. We're going to run a motor off the back EMF on this uh, setup over here, that one there. And now the wheel uh, has two sides. Um, this is cool stuff. And also, I want to uh, take the people tonight to a little tour. We're going to put this on lightly. And then we're going to have a sit up here, my little antenna, my little chicken stick, and a little LED. And um, we'll take a walk out in the yard. And we'll light the light bulb up in the air just by uh, a little breakout, not much. I know Justin, you've been all about. You don't like the breakout, right? You always uh, break my stones about it. Uh, it's a whole other event there. It's taking the, the capacitance of the top there and controlling it. But taking the, the ground to that capacitance, which is the bottom of that secondary coil, and controlling it. So there's, there's a whole realm of work there that could be done. Go ahead and you know, body popping on. Just one person, I guess. He's me and you, Justin. Let's get fired up. So we come over here to this one, and all we have to do is put the connection over here. It's me and you, bud. So we put the connection on. So we can go ahead and start the wheel turning. And now the 530 volts should start climbing. Come on, man. Me and you hanging out. It's all good. You and I, bro. So um, over here, uh, you'll see that this battery will start charging. Now, if you look at the point here. So you're going on. Why not charge? That's just the action of the magnet, the inductive force. Okay. 
Oh, uh, Justin, Sal, pretty soon, pretty soon, um, now you got me thinking of it, I'll make a note, and, um, uh, speakers up there. I, I don't use these speakers for sound. I got it coming right out of my little off my phone and stuff. And I've been tearing apart some speaker frames and doing some stuff. The jewel. Gotcha. All right. So I didn't have this wire connected here. So we have that connected. Now this light should light up. So we were the numbers we were getting. See the light? There's the light now. Oh shit. Burn it out. There we go. Now we're going up to 10 volts. We don't spin it like a mofo. This side's not even on yet. Still with 5 volts here. Over here, where at 10 volts and climbing. So, this battery here would not charge from a conventional battery charger. So, it was definitely dead. So, this is desulfating the battery, which is just, it pulled, blew up. Oh, uh, heck, I'm going to show you. So, I blew up three of these so far. These take three volts, so they're a load. So, it's not really that good because they put a three volt load on the circuit and um, look at that. The battery is actually working and this is moving really good. So let's go ahead and get this side turned on and I guess I don't have to turn the wheel. It's already turning. We'll start to see a flash up top here as soon as I connect it. Alright, we can see a flash and now the voltage went up from five to eight climbing. So this battery as well would not, not charge from a conventional charger. So now it's desulfating, 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 and it's bringing the battery back to life. This one over here is already up to 11 and change. Now I can dial this down a little bit to put these lights down. Get that light down too. That one right there. So the green is deep. Right? You'll find the sweet spot. I can feel the table shaking from the vibration. Um, this is another cool thing is uh, I have a coil here. This is uh, a box of coils I have left over from my uh, Figaro, 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 Furio, Figaro, Figaro. Um, electric dragon generator, basically. Uh, with no moving parts except for the exciter. And I got these left over. This battery is up to nine point in change in climbing. It's going to settle in there. So an experiment I want to show you guys is I have this um, 12 volt battery. Let's let the voltage climb up, but let's see if it goes on. Um, the experiment I did earlier, the battery is a little bit more charged, but it it up the voltage. Um, not clear why, but here it goes.
No. Not running yet. Ain't gonna run that motor yet. Alright, that's off the five mover. Nope. That battery's dead as a doorknob. Which is good. See if we can desulfate it. Make it a good battery again. Well, that's putting this system to a test. So I'm changing the resistance with the pot. And when I do so, look at the volts go up on the voltmeter. Make sure you guys can see that clear from over there. So I'm changing the resistance on the pot. I go back the other way where I was. Light getting brighter. Table shaping one. But the bolts stay now. So now by safe and add more resistance. Or less resistance, I should say. Or the right spot. Not a good spot on that one. At least I was. this one's doing. Okay, 
change in the pot now. You can see the number, but you can see the pot right there. Look at that. So um, I believe I'm lowering the resistance. Because I go all the way left, and then I'm flipping past halfway. So I think as you turn it right, you're going up in resistance. So dead battery from five and change when we started. Creep it up there. Um, Sorry about that. I just got a phone call while I'm filming. It was my daughter. I had to answer. So, um, everybody back? Hey, Marker. Hey, Angel. So what you're looking at is desulfating this battery. When I started 18 minutes ago, it was at 5.70 volts. Now it's creeping up in the nines and it wouldn't hold the charge from a conventional charger. So it was a dead battery. So it's desulfating that battery. And that's off of this circuit. We're using that coil. That's the heart read. Hello, hello, hello. And then over here, this is the other circuit running that coil. And um, this battery as well 18 minutes ago, 19 minutes ago, was at 5.72 volts. It was a dead battery, wouldn't charge conventionally. So now I got it charging through the two circuits right here. Not only are we charging, it's um, hitting it with such a pulse and such a um, event. That's why I call this the event, because the event is the back EMF shock and it's a high pulse going into that battery and what it's doing on the plates get all crusted up with the electrolysis that goes on between the plates and it gets cluttered up through time and it kills the battery the battery yep these are both dead batteries we're charging so we're literally desulfating both of these batteries I got a bunch of batteries some are dead some are good and these were dead ones. So this is a great, great way to check check the theory on, on desulfating. So these are definitely both hitting it. So now the wheel's getting hit from two sides. 
And um, so the Bedini setup for batteries is good for conditioning batteries. So right now we're conditioning that battery. We are cleaning it up. You got that right. And we can call it conditioning as well. So we're conditioning that battery. So um, these two are the power in. These are the prime mover batteries. That's the charger battery. And same here is uh, prime mover batteries of these two and the charger battery there. So we're 24 volts coming in. These wires are two different setups. That's 150 turns by filer. That one's, uh, uh, I think, 1,600 turns of the trigger wire and 300 turns of the 16 gauge. That right there, uh, the power wire, I believe, is like 28 or 26 or 28. I think it's a 20. No, th no this is the 28. And this is more like a 20 six so to get the transistor to fire using different lengths of wires i'm just experimenting so on this one here we got 1600 linear feet of trigger wire and we got only 300 well 1600 turns 300 turns okay so it's about 450 feet of wire on the 300 turns. And the other one, I didn't do the math, but it's I just wanted to wind the heck out of it. This one here um, is set up differently, but it's the same 16, oh no, the same uh, 300 turns. No, actually this one here was 450, we're not right that. 450 turns. But it was 150 feet. So something I wanted to mention tonight is uh, the atmospheric pressure, 14.7. And 30 inches of water is the same. That's going to be very important. Especially when I get into some vacuum tubes that I'm going to build. So right there is the heartbeat. Right there is the heartbeat. And I can dial that a little bit using the pot. Let me just set you down here. Just go over to the pot right here and I can add more or less resistance. Right now I'm adding more, but I'm all the way to the right. So I need to lose a little resistance. And we'll see the numbers, watch the numbers start moving. So the light's very dim right now. And I feel, I felt the shake come out of it. I know, very important, I brought that up. And same thing with you, bringing that up. It's very important. Especially in all the studies that I'm get, that I'm doing, been doing, or getting ready to do. Um, those two are very important. In fact, give me one second. And what we're going to do is talk about pressure. We'll fire this up. And we'll take a walk around my house with my little um, home riggy stick here with a light on it. And we'll take note is what we'll do. We'll take note on why do we think we are seeing light close near and then a break and then at a certain distance away. So I guess what I'm about to show you is the nodes from the top of this top load and uh, the bottom of that secondary goes to earth ground. So it's creating a dipole between there and there. So yeah, at distance is dipole and it's having its 
collapse, event, bam, expansion, collapse, event, bam, expansion. And that dipole is shooting out and then it gets to an area where it has a node just like uh, your fret on your guitar neck. It'll have that node and that node is a null point and we're going to walk through it as we walk out of the garage and then we're going to get to a point to where the light lights up and that would be when we start walking away from the node and then we'll do it again so we'll count how many nodes ex compression and expansion is 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 what put it this way if i can explain it in any way better if we tie a string over there i have a string in my hand we pluck the string that at, when you put tension, when I pull a little bit more on that string, you're going to see a vibratorial on the whole string. But as you put tension on it, you're going to see nodes pop up. You're going to see the node is going to be uh, a harmonic. And each one of those are points of null where it expands out. And that's the dipole. I'm going to show you in my simple little fitamajiggy here with with the LED and the, and the key here is guys, if you do this at home off your Tesla coil, the key here is um, use a germanium diode. It's the, the diode is, is very reactive to the pressure that I speak about the, in the whole array. So let's go over here. You got the wheels still turning and batteries coming from five are gonna be definitely do need some time to charge. Give me one minute. Pee break. All I got to say is NASCAR. Let's rock this. All right, so we'll come over here. Take another light. So what I do is take a regular LED, take the positive side. And what you do is you run it against the ring side, put it together, and then take the other side, which is the positive side of the diode and the negative side of the LED. And you actually need a little antenna. I'm going to grab a red one. And you have to figure out which side to hold. Fire this right now. Put it on real, real lightly. Okay. 
That's the antenna on there. All right, so right here, nothing's on. Beep, move. Walk out here. Let's go ahead and just touch the rim of my fascia. So my, my drip edge around the building. I'm touching the paint, so it's kind of hard to get. One-handed, guys. Huh. This is what I could do. Watch this. So I'm going to clip this on here. Nothing on, but watch when I touch the end. It goes on. So that's the drip edge around the house. Um peek and see what's going on in there. Just a very little, very little light coming out of the spark gap, very small. In fact, let's check the top, see how much pressure is coming out. Lights up good, huh? Not a lot of pressure. So I wouldn't be able to keep my hand there. So let's grab this right here. And this has, we're using this little U shape as an antenna. And we're going to, you see nothing's going on right now, right? So we're in one of those nodes. And we're coming out here. Look. See. Nothing going on. Oh, there it is. No. Let's touch my window frame, which is aluminum. Look at that. So the window frame is picking up that little signal. So any conductor outside the room, look how far away I am. I'm outside the workshop. 30 feet maybe, maybe a few more. So you see how that event there. Now let's go ahead and when you add air, now we're going to add air to this right now. We're not going to move any gap there. We're going to add air. We're not going to do that. Rarify space between the two balls has air blowing through it forcefully. And it's creating like a spring is what I think. It's making stuff pop out of the top. It won't pop out of the top right now. See how snotty it got? Nothing is escaping out of the top yet. I'd have to expand it wider, but we'll do this, we'll take a walk. Now you can see here, I'm, you know, it's pretty bright. We're near the coil about three feet, four feet. Then all of a sudden it'll, you see that? Watch. Not on no more. On, on, off, on, off, on, off. So these nodes are, I'm right-handed. These nodes 
are creating a sine wave, basically. These ripples. And in these spaces right here is where the it's not picking up. And here's the big node because basically we're not doing anything right now. But look, all of a sudden, I just seen it. There it is. Let's let's turn my antenna up. Keep walking out. Hmm. Let me put you down for a second. Swap my. Let me swap sides here and see if it makes any difference. No. Nope. Nothing. And let me swap over here back to where we were. And we'll just stick with that. So let's go back in. We're going to turn it up now because I'm not able to walk away more than 30 feet. So now you'll notice that there's going to be a little difference. staying on now we're outside now we're turning the corner and we can look back at the shop and the LEDs I guess if I hold it up it gets brighter now we'll walk out here got even more brighter now we're walking away from the whole structure Let's see, we are probably 60, 70 feet away. How about that, guys? All of a sudden, look. Let me back up. Look, there goes another node. There goes another node. Look at that. Can I keep walking and get past that node? I don't know. Oh, whoa, 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 look at that. Hmm. And the wheel still turns. Got our little heartbeat going right there. Got our heartbeat going right there. Let me set you guys down and get the lights back on. Well, what I can say about the Tesla stuff 
is that it explains or shows us that you can make an event, any kind of event you want to make. Anybody out there in your garage build something out of circuitry or something that is going to cause an event. And what I mean by an event is some electromagnetic event, one pulse. Now that event could be a chain of events, could be a, a large repetition, it can be slow and hurts. That event is what we're looking for to tap into the ground. The air doesn't have to be even looked at if you want to get energy from the ground the way I see it is that the ground has the positive and negative. You just need to put the right things in front of it in order for it to respond back to you and all the juices in the dam in the mass of the planet. So just look at it that way, guys. Um, it's exciting. It's, it's freaking way exciting because I'm thinking you take an electrostatic plate, you put it above the ground to where it doesn't break out to the ground. It has electrostatic induction to the ground. And what the ground will do is it will act just like a magnet and whatever electrostatic high tension plate that I put above the ground, the ground will repel the same charge away. So the dipole begins. You get me? The dipole begins in a different way. It's not like taking a rod, sticking it in the ground, and you're just creating, look, Mom, I got two rods in the ground. I use different metals, and the next thing you know, you got a volt and a half. This is different. This is inductively coupling to the ground. The ground has everything, the power. There's just one, there's just one thing there. You, like Ed says, you need to get it running. So what I wanted to explain to you guys tonight was in my Tesla side of the experiment is that in the air, there's going to be points to where your harmonics come into play and the key note with the ground is that there, there's a wave traveling through the ground which allows the energy below us you anybody that it's really moving it's fluctuating because of that wave that's um, going through the whole tremeal of the ground we stand on so you can capture that you have to tap into that and you want to be able to catch it at the right place to where you can see here on this experiment where we, you're capsulizing the half of energy that normally gets dumped in the ground. So here's a great example. And I don't want to bail out of my Tesla experiment because the nodes are very important. The harmonics are very important. The back EMF of an event is very important, which is what you're seeing in front of you right now. And the knowing the makings of the base of it is what I'm trying to explain through showing the fact that a germanium dioid is allowing me to walk away 70 feet from my Tesla coil. And my germanium dioid is a dioid, but it's made out of a crystal. And the crystal sits in between the two probes. And when I put the dioid of the LED, 
backwards from the dioid of the germanium, I get I get particles of of appearing at my LED. Particles. I get particles flying through the air. Now, the way I look at it, I'm gonna try to If you guys can see this, but the way I look at it is here's the clouds. Let's see if I can. No, that ain't gonna work. Let me. Let me have something right now. The way I look at it is 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 a. This is how I look at the energy. So if we're here on the ground, okay. Any, no matter where you are in the ground, if you're on a high mountain on the ground, or if you're down at sea level over here, okay, or you're high up on the mountain, the, the ground plane follows. It follows. So if you have a pole going up in the air and you're trying to send a signal out, right, you may hear people online or people saying that the higher up you go the more voltage you're going to get exponentially as you go up every hundred feet well may be true but whatever you're doing cannot be connected to ground because the ground plane hangs on so this pole the ground plane would come up to the top of the pole and back down so that ground it fluctuates now with that fluctuation is a, to me a vertical thing so here's your here's your planet right here's the earth okay and here's the magnetic streams like ed says coming out everywhere vertical okay everywhere vertical what we're doing here with the little tesla coil okay we're, we're sending out an event and that event right here is we're blasting out. We built capacitance up here so like it's a supercharged cannon. And what that cannon is putting out that capacitance as a blast, okay? It's blasting that shit everywhere. It's not even directed anywhere. It's blasting it sort of how the... Sort of how the sun is radiates it out everywhere. So, so when we blast it out, what we're doing here is these vertical lines that I described, they can be penetrated this way. And this is how a freaking TV, the old-fashioned tube TVs would work because you're able to change the magnetic streams by using magnetism. Well, here you go, guys. So this... Vertical lines of magnetism going straight up. When you put this particles, you toss particles at it, it's going to get out of its way. So it, it creates a place linear, uh, horizontally. And this horizontally is fluctuated just like this. So if this wave is a certain length, that wave right there that's traveling is a dipole. Remember that is a dipole and that wave is spinning okay it's traveling like this spinning and it's also creating dipoles upon itself as it travels so what it's doing is it's cutting a, it's cutting right through the fabric of the ether and everything everything's magnetic streams coming up it's cutting right through it so by it being cut through is a great example of why would you even want to deal with electromagnetic waves when everything above the ground is dealing with electromagnetic waves? We got so much interference going on. Ed mentions about radio waves that uh, you'll hear better at night than you do in the day. And I believe that's because at nighttime you don't have the the 
on the longitudinal waves, you don't have the, uh, the static present of the direct force of the sun because you're on the opposite side, the tail end of the planet when it's dark. And the fact that that if you ever hear about people who talk on their ham radios or CBs at nighttime, they'll be able to skip and get to states they never talked to before and only on certain times and nights and full moons or whatever and it'll skip the signal will skip and that's going to be a place like that's a harmonic that's traveling in horizontally in, in the atmosphere it's just traveling and I, I think that's where the planet earth creates its own broadband to where that horizontal travel of that bandwidth of those frequencies ride along that. Now, how high, how tall that is off a ground plane and up in the air, I don't know. But that's how it's got to be done. It, it, it makes just so much sense. The um, part about not having to use the air um, which to me is just a gold mine, but the real true gold mine is the ground. The ground, like I said, it's once you know how it reacts, it ain't reacting too much to too much, but things moving across it, it's reacting and people just don't even see it. It, you know, we get an, ex we're a fine example of we're just walking tuning forks like that our brain our pineal gland um, is very capable of moving mass or controlling wind clouds our minds very capable of controlling a lot of that stuff, but only being tapped into 10% usage on our general mind is that the other 90%, we just don't know how to tap into it. So the thing I was trying to say is the ground, the inductive part of the ground will give you both positive and negative, and it's just the principles all follow the same rules of electromagnetic spectrum the whole, the whole Shamil, it's, um, you got, you got rules to follow, but that's oh. mainly above ground. But when you go below ground, it's a whole different ballpark because you're not dealing with the things that we're dealing in, especially, um, how we use electric. It's totally primitive, very primitive. Those field lines I was speaking about, and you're able to cut through them, well, if you had a receiver out there, that receiver will be tuned into your transmitter, and you would pick it up no matter where you are on the planet. But you have to have enough capacitive pressure to overcome. The same as the inductive force that's between the magnet of the wheel and the core of that coil, the inductive force, those Henry's there, you have to overcome it. And once you're able to wind a coil that will overcome